నానో టెక్నాలజీతో క్యాన్సర్కు మాత్రమే చెక్ పెట్టగలమా ఈ సాంకేతికతతో మిగతా వ్యాధులకు సరికొత్త చికిత్సా విధానాలు రూపొందించగలమా ఈ అంశాలు ప్రస్తుతానికి చర్చకొస్తున్నాయి వీటిపైన వివరణ ఇస్తున్నారు సిసిఎంబి శాస్త్రవేత్త డాక్టర్ లేఖ దినేష్ కుమార్ అన్ని రకాల క్యాన్సర్లను నిర్వీర్యం చేసేందుకు ఈ చికిత్సను ఉపయోగించుకోవచ్చని చెబుతున్నారు బయోమెడిసిన్ ఉత్పత్తులపై విస్తృతంగా చర్చ జరుగుతోందని శాస్త్రవేత్తలు వైద్యులు కూడా వీటి ప్రాధాన్యతను ప్రయోజనాలను గుర్తిస్తున్నారని అంటున్నారు డాక్టర్ లేఖ దినేష్ కుమార్ క్యాన్సర్తో సహా మిగతా వ్యాధులకు పర్సనలైజ్డ్ మెడిసిన్ అందుబాటులోకి వచ్చే అవకాశం ఉందని వివరిస్తున్నారు నిధులు సరైన రీతిలో అందుతే మరిన్ని పరిశోధనలు చేసేందుకు వీలుంటుందని చెబుతున్నారు we are talking about the colon cancer and its uh, the effect of the curcumin capsules with this uh, uh, colon cancer is this nanotechnology useful only for the colon cancer or we can use this technology for other type of cancers also all types of cancer that this can be applied so and colon is one of the difficult place for you to reach so that is how it was a you know major task this this was going on for 5 6 years the research because most of uh, the particles which we have uh, uh, designed was either failing or uh, um, uh, you know it was not uh, that much successful but the curcumin as you know most of the plant products are uh, you know as uh, chemotherapy drugs also in the market and curcumin is a you know age old uh, uh, dietary supplement okay for example we put haldi in uh, in during the seasoning every day food every day food rather rather when i uh, attended a conference uh, in in the uk they told that indian food is one of the best food you people use uh, turmeric in everything every day food and ginger garlic everything and i don't think that cancer is a colon cancer is a big issue in uh, india yes true colon cancer is not a big issue in india but they because of this turmeric and its uh, anti inflammatory anti cancer properties world over the work is going on uh, in, even in national institute of health usa they are they they usa tried to patent our uh, you know haldi turmeric finally we, we were successful in canceling their patent because this is this is a knowledge from you know we have uh, got it from our grandmothers it is not that science is in it Mm-hmm. yes it is an age old you know grandma grandma therapy if, suppose if you have a cough uh, they ask you to put it in milk and then drink you know why milk why the curcumin has not come into the market as a drug per se is because of its poor availability water solubility so poor bio availability we call it so it's not easily soluble in water so you can relate it to why when we do seasoning we put turmeric into the oil not into the water the curries okay so why we put it into the oil is also that it is fat soluble oh. so there is a you know even grandma whether they knew or about the curcumin solubility or not that is what we learned it right during uh, uh, seasoning we put it in the oil a little bit of haldi right so this is this is how it makes to the body available so the the poor availability of the curcumin was the major hindrance of making curcumin an anti cancer drug so now of course it has got an added effect there are people so many iits in india we are working on making curcumin available you know uh, bio available or water soluble so the day it comes yes curcumin becomes a very very uh, and in nano formulation you get it in the concentrated form rather than taking the haldi as such that is why the nano formulations have come you can get so much of you know active curcumin in the turmeric curcumin is the active component which does the job so if you make it into a nano form you, the, you can get it in large quantities you know concentration Uh, the future everyone discussing about these bio medicines because these are very precise and very uh, good in manner they, they are saying like every scientist and the doctors are also discussing like that so how this uh, research that you are working on is going to helpful for that not only for the cancer any other longer uh, life span diseases any other uses for this 
Yes, sir, Ramya. Actually, uh, as you know, before this RT-PCR for the COVID test was a very, very, you know, nobody has heard of it. Now it has become a household name. Just like that, biodrug, molecular therapy. Now that is the next future of any disease. The, it is replacing all the old age, uh, you know, diagnostic tests, everything which uh, right now the doctors are using, they are all coming to personalize therapy. For example, uh, you want to, uh, you know, cure your own. So everybody is different. My body is very different from your body, very different from some other person. So people want to use a personalized therapy. For example, in my body, a gene mutation, which is causing a cancer is very different from somebody else's body. So if I want, I can personalize to my body. So the gene which is responsible for causing a cancer in one person's body is different from the other person's body. So that is why we call it a personalized medicine. So now this will pay way to the personalized medicine, not only to cancer, for many, many other diseases also. So this is going to be the future therapeutics, RNA, I, RNA interference, we call it. And then comparatively, when we discuss about all other diseases, the personalized medicine is more discussing about the cancer. Why it is so? Why that uh, personalized medicine must be needed for the cancer patients? It is not only for cancer patients, Ramya. It is personalized medicine. You can personalize it for any other diseases also. Most of the research is going on the cancer. That's why I'm asking this question. Yeah, because in cancer, there are so many different pathways in different cancers. There are so many different types of cancers, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer. So in brain cancer, for example, all the drugs may not work because there is something called blood brain barrier. So there should be specific drugs to cross that barrier. And that I told you just now, different genes are mutated in different, you know, people. People are very different. Your genetic makeup is very different from what I am made up of. So you cannot have a blanket, for example, paracetamol works for fever for everybody. It will not work for uh, like cancer. So since different genes of mutation is different, different genes are mutated in different cancers. So the personalized medicine will be maybe more specific and applicable to cancers compared to other diseases. Well, as uh, the whole world is waiting for this personalized medicine in every disease, so what is your opinion? When can we get this kind of personalized medicine for all kind of disease? Uh, that is a million dollar question, I should say, because in India, we our research is not that up to the mark, I should say. We should have a lot of fundings compared to you know US and UK. Our research funding is very towards science and technology so is very less. And our research funding also, we are struggling to get, especially now the COVID has come, it is very, very difficult to get funding from government of India. But we should have a lot of industry partners. That's what I feel in US and all, you have a lot of industry partners who will come to forward to fund the research. So like that, I feel if industry partners will come to you know fund us, uh, it would be very easy for co-developing this with them. You know what is so many specific for a particular cancer, you know, say or a particular disease. If if any company is interested, they should collaborate with the scientists and also the clinicians. These clinicians are very very you know very important people in our research. They should give us the problems. So as far as India is concerned, still we have, you know, because our population is so much, our load is so much on the doctors that they don't find much time to do, you know, collaborate with us and do research. So when that atmosphere comes, that definitely personalized medicine is within our reach. There should be a perfect marriage between the, you know, scientists, doctors, and the industry partners. So that day comes and we have no dearth of funding. It, as of now, it is a little far away, I should say. Now, when it come to, comes to your research on the nanocognitive structures, so now you are already uh, done the research on mice. So, so at uh, what stage is this? And if it's really want to come to the industry level and to the market level, in uh, there are uh, how many steps are there in this research? Yes, actually, this research is very very uh, uh, near uh, near to completion. For example, now the next level is that human trials we have to do. Certain companies have, after this has got a publicity in the newspapers, some industry partners have already contacted us. 
we are discussing this with uh, uh, the uh, ncl pune and the other uh, cog as well as well, because most of them are interested in the curcumin nanoparticle because, uh, rather than the dietary fiber because this has shown more effect and some companies are already marketing uh, you know curcumin per se as a drug for metastatic cancer i know some of the companies like zero harm or something so they have come forward to take this ahead they showed the interest so we need to now go to go to the next step we will give this and give it to them for you know for manufacture in a bigger scale do the human clinical trials if it is fine in couple of years uh, i feel that this should also hit the market